Hello everyone and welcome to round one of the 2018 Altibox Norway Championship. Uh, now, uh, as you all know, or maybe some of you don't, uh, before the classic part of the tournament there was a, there was a Blitz tournament and uh, although uh, it, it was very tense, in the end it was Wesley So who won that event. Uh, but uh, now we are going to cover the classic uh, part of the tournament and already we have a, a pretty nice game in round one. It's Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana. Once again, the, the duo that will meet in November to decide the fate of the World Championship. Uh, but before we before we show the game, uh, we do want to check out uh, some of the other contenders. So let's let's meet the contenders that will be uh, fighting for the, for the title of the Norway champion. Uh, in order of appearance, here you have Hikaru Nakamura, Wesley So, Vishwanathan Anand, Fabiano Caruana. Uh, Magnus Carlsen, Maxim Vashiel Lagrav, uh, there's Sergei Karyakin, uh, Shahriar Mamedyarov, Levon Aronyan, and of course everyone's favorite uh, Ding Liren, the man who who didn't who who simply doesn't lose any games. Uh, so <laughs> definitely interested to see how he fares in this tournament. And uh, once again, before we before we check out this uh, pr pretty neat game, uh, we do have some photos. Uh, sorry, we already saw that. There you have Magnus Carlsen, a nice close-up with with a blurry uh, Peter Hein Nielsen in the back, his coach. Uh, then we have a photo from the beginning of this round, uh, shaking hands with with Fabi. Uh, then another one. There you have it. You can just enjoy it for for a brief moment. And uh, notice in the back that uh, Carlsen no longer uses his orange plus uh, plus water. Uh, refreshing drink, but uh, they all use these sponsored uh, bottles of water. So okay, a very nice close-up, and uh, oh, this is a very nice close-up as well of Fabi. Very nice, and uh, okay, this is one I took from from the live feed, so it's not not of the highest quality. Uh, all of the photos uh, I will be using in this Norway Championship are are taken by Leonard Oates. He's a photographer, and he said it's okay to uh, for us to enjoy them. So, uh, as usual, I will put uh, all of the links to his social media in the description below. Uh, if you enjoy photography, if you enjoy chess, you know, be sure to follow him uh, on all of his social media. So, uh, that being said, let's check out this game. So, Carlsen versus uh, Caruana, let's, let's go. Uh, we have E4, E5, and already uh, a very interesting turn of events on move 2. Uh, Carlsen goes for bishop to c4. So avoiding knight to f3. Uh, everyone was uh, kind of hoping to see what Carlsen can do against the Petrov defense as uh, Caruana is now considered, uh, you know, the, the top authority on the Petrov defense. He basically won the candidates tournament with it, uh, but Carlsen avoids it with bishop to c4. Now it's very interesting, why would Carlsen avoid it? Uh, could be that he doesn't think he he's uh, prepared enough to take on Caruana's petro defense. Maybe he doesn't uh, he doesn't think he could achieve anything with White against it, or maybe he just uh, doesn't want to show what he has prepared for November. But I think we will see uh, a lot of petro defenses in November. So knight to f6. We have d3, c6, knight to f3, and d5 now. Uh, bishop to b3. Exchanging in the center doesn't give White pretty much anything after captures, captures, and check. Uh, black will simply attack the bishop, bishop d7, and after captures, captures, the pawn is defended. Uh, black can develop naturally, bishop c5, bishop e7, the rook can come to c8, so uh, black, would, black would enjoy playing this position very much. So, uh, bishop to b3. Uh, we have bishop to b4 check, bishop blocks, bishop captures, knight captures, and a5 now. Uh, Fabi is threatening a4 to capture, uh, to capture the bishop. So c3, making room for the bishop, knight bd7, uh, e captures on d5, c captures on d5, and we have castles by both sides. Uh, rook to e1, Carlsen attacks the e5 pawn, uh, rook to e8 defending, and knight to f1, preparing either knight e3 or knight g3, depending what black plays. Uh, b5, expanding on the queen side, and a4. Uh, a very nice move, and you'll see, uh, you'll see how far this a4 move goes uh, in the long run. Uh, b4, c captures on b4, a captures on b4, and knight to e3. Knight to g3, also an idea, but uh, it kind of leaves this f2 pawn a bit too weak. Black could go for something like queen b6, uh, and then knight to g4 could, uh, could be very annoying for white. Uh, so, knight to e3, with a tempo, immediately attacking that d5 pawn. Uh, bishop to b7, defending, uh, and d4 now. 
And what do you do here? Here you could capture uh, E captures, Queen captures, nothing really going on there for black. Uh, it's a very weak pawn. White will pretty much have no problems winning it. Uh, so instead uh, we have E4 attacking the knight on F3. And uh, now comes a very nice move by Carlsen, knight to E5. It seems like a pawn sacrifice, but as you'll see, uh, it is a temporary pawn sacrifice, but a lot of compensation comes with it. A knight captures, uh, we have pawn captures and rook captures. And now queen d4. A beautiful centralizing move. Your queen on d4 is always uh, a good idea. Attacking the rook. Also, the pawn on b4 is now the, uh, attacked. Uh, rook to e7. And now, uh, not capturing the pawn immediately. If you capture immediately, then black can, could gain a lot of initiative with d4, d3. Uh, so, instead after rook e7, first rook a to c1. Continue development. Uh, there's no rush to win that pawn. Uh, we have rook to d7, now defending the, the, the weak d5 pawn, rook e to d1, and now h6. Uh, we have rook to c5, again, Carlsen doesn't want to win the pawn too soon, he, now, he will now pile up on the d5 pawn. Uh, rook to a5, and now comes rook captures on a5. Again, here you could capture queen captures, but the idea is the same, after rook captures, queen captures, d4 is coming. After knight f5, d3 is coming, and uh, you, you allowed something that, uh, you know, needs not to be allowed. So after rook a5, rook captures, we have queen captures, and now h3. Making some breeding uh, room for the king, also uh, keeping an eye on that knight on f6. Uh, we have uh, king to h7, and uh, now rook to c1. Uh, we have rook to c7, offering a trade, rook captures, queen captures, and now comes queen captures on b4. Only now does Carlsen capture the pawn, and uh, the material is completely equal now. Both sides have a light square bishop, a knight, a queen, and five pawns, and the king, of course. Uh, but uh, Carlsen has a passed a pawn and a passed b pawn, uh, two connected passed pawns. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's very nice. Uh, so, queen to c1 check. Uh, what do you do here? Uh, well, there are uh, a couple of ways you can block this. Bishop d1, knight d1, knight f1, king h2. Uh, if you go king h2, then queen c7 will simply repeat queen c7, queen c1. So definitely not a good idea. Knight f1 will run into bishop to a6, and now white is simply lost. There is no defense against queen captures. Uh, so after this queen to c1 check, bishop to d1 was played. Uh, now the queen is also guarding the b2 pawn. The bishop is... Uh, stopping check and also uh, keeping an eye on that a4 pawn. Uh, bishop to a6, preparing bishop to e2 to pin the bishop and queen d4. Uh, we have bishop to e2, king h2, and bishop captures. Knight captures and now comes queen back to c7 check. King g1 and queen back to c1. And here Carlsen plays b4. So as you can see, material is uh, again completely equal, uh, but the past a and b pawn do pose a lot of problems for black. So here Car Caruana uh, does think for a while and he really got low on time here. Uh, he plays the strongest move recommended by the engine and it's a move that gains uh, so much activity for black but you do have to give up some material. He plays e3. Uh, pawn captures on e3 and now knight to e4. The idea is knight to d2 and this will block uh, the queen's defense of the knight. Uh, we have queen captures on d5, grabbing another pawn, and now queen to d2. Now the knight is no longer protected, and Caruana is threatening to capture it. Uh, unfortunately for Fabi, uh, the knight cannot be captured because of queen to f5 check. Uh, king h8, and now queen to g4, the knight is now defended. Uh, we have f5, again, if you capture the pawn, then queen captures knight, so queen has to move back. Queen e2, and now knight to e4. And this was Fabi's idea. Uh, there really wasn't a better idea. I give up some material, but to gain a lot of a lot of uh, activity. Uh, but uh, Carlson does have the two pass pawns, and he wants to push them. Queen e1. We have queen to a1, attacking the a4 pawn. Uh, a5. Uh, knight to d6. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, queen d2. Uh, knight to c4, attacking the queen. Queen to d4, offering a trade of queens. Of course, uh, you cannot allow to trade queens. You are down two pawns. Uh, we have queen to c1, and now king to f1. Knight captures on e3 with check. Queen captures, queen captures, and now king to f2. So uh, now it's uh, one pawn up, but still, those are two connected pass pawns on the queen side. Uh, queen c2, check. King g3, and g5 now. Uh, threatening f4, of course, uh, to win the queen. Uh, we have queen to e5 check, king to h7, and now king to h2. 
Uh, Fabi pushes f4. Uh, the threat is now, of course, f3. So Carlsen prevents it. Queen d5. Another beautiful centralizing move. The queen is guarding f3. Now the pawns are free to march forward. Uh, queen to a4. Now, if you wanna if you wanna guard the b pawn, you're gonna have problems pushing the a pawn, and then white queen will have to get uh, become very unactive. So instead, we have queen check, king moves, and queen to g6. Carlsen gives up one pawn on the queen side. Uh, to gobble up pawns on the king side. Uh, queen captures on b4, we have queen captures on h6 with check, king g8, queen captures on g5 with check, king h7, uh, and queen to h5 check. Uh, king moves, uh, repeating the position uh, for a bit, king h7, and now h4. Uh, all of the pawns are protected, so queen to d6. Uh, some, some ideas with pushing f3. Uh, queen to h5 check, king moves, again Carlsen repeats a couple of moves, uh, and now h5. And here, black really doesn't have anything to do. Uh, Carlsen will play queen g6. If the queen stays here, then exchanging qu queens will simply win, as the a-pawn is already almost on a8. And uh, if you avoid it, there's really no counterplay. h6, queen, queen g7 is coming. So nothing really to do here. Only move is the move Favi plays. That's f3 with check. Uh, g3, uh, and now f2. Uh, we have queen to g6 check, and now Fabi doesn't capture, rather he plays king to h8. We have queen captures, and now queen to f1. So, uh, keeping uh, the game alive, but uh, now it's three passed pawns against zero passed pawns. There's really nothing to do here. Uh, queen to h8 check, king moves, queen to e6 check, king moves, and now queen to e3. Uh, blocking, uh, blocking any checks Fabi might have in mind. Queen to b5, but now... Uh, again, a very nice idea by Carlsen. Queen c3 check. The a5 pawn is now guarded. Uh, King h7 and now g4. A very nice move. Uh, moves like queen to e2 now don't really do anything because after king to g3, notice that the white queen is guarding all of the squares the black queen might use to check the white king. So there's really nothing black can do here. So after g4, we have king queen to d5, queen to c7 check, king moves and now king to g3. Queen e6, uh, queen d8 check, king h7, and queen to d3 check now. King moves, and now a6. The queen is guarding the a-pawn from, from d3 very nicely. Queen e5 check, king moves, uh, we have queen to a1, and now queen to d8 check. King moves, uh, we have queen to e7 check, king moves, queen e3 check, king moves, and now comes a7. Again, the queen is uh, beautifully positioned here, guarding the a7 pawn, and uh, it was in this position that Fabiano Caruana... Uh, World Chess Championship challenger resigned the game. Why did he resign? Well, it's pretty obvious. There are really no moves here. Uh, after f1 check, queen f1. After king g3, there are no more checks to be given. Again, the white queen is blocking all of the squares uh, black can use to check. So yeah, after a7, uh, Fabi resigned the game. And uh, a very nice win for Magnus Carlsen. He is, in fact, the only one that won a game in round one of the Norway Championship. So uh, already from round one, he's in the lead. We will be showing the standings after some other rounds, but it's not necessary after round one. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Konstantinos Mavromatis, uh, Matthew Klein, and Marcel Vilnitsky for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to wish uh, a happy birthday to Leopold Gerlach, uh, a subscriber of mine. Uh, his girlfriend contacted me if uh, I would do this for his birthday. So I thought, uh, yes, I, I will do it, uh, of course, because, uh, you know, I thought it's not like... Uh, it's not like uh, asking someone to congratulate you a happy birthday. Uh, nothing like that. It's uh, I think uh, as you know, we are chess players, and uh, you know you don't really get get all that much in life uh, when you're a chess player. So uh, I don't know. I I just uh, thought I, I I would do this. So Leopold, uh, you know, I wish you all the best in 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 chess, in college, and in life in general. You know, <laughs> go go get them. So yeah. Uh, once again, that was the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, and I will see you soon, perhaps with another game from round one of the Norway Championship. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see if there are any any interesting, uh, you know, lines that were hidden that I didn't uh, uh, spot during, during the live coverage. So yeah, uh, once again, thank you all. And I will see you soon.